So this is Josh Mandel back with another episode of a Guided Walk Through Fire. And today I think we're going to take the first lesson in uh, an area of the spec that could probably use a fair amount of exploration, which is vocabulary uh, and codings. And what I want to do first is give you a sense, uh, a functional sense, of how fire works with uh, different vocabularies. Uh, looking at some over-the-wire data, and then we'll dig into the sections of the specification um, that define how vocabularies work. And so what we've done in the past is to use uh, one of the open fire reference servers, uh, actually using the happy server to do searches like uh, find me all observations. Uh, and observations are an interesting data type, of course, because they're typically coded. Uh, if I make an observation, Let's, well, let's see. Uh, I might find something like this. So here's an observation. And how do I know what was observed is I can look at the observation. See, this is an observation resource type. And it's got a status of final and an effective period saying uh, when the observation was, was made or when it was effective. And then there's this code here that tells me what it was that was observed, what kind of observation was made. Uh, and right here, you'll see something interesting. The code here which you might expect to be some sort of a cryptic numeric value indicating something from a, a standardized vocabulary. This code actually just has a text element that says average respiratory rate. What's going on here? Well, let's see if we can find um, some other examples of coded observations so we can start to uh, compare them. And I'm just going to page down through the, these results in the happy search. If you try to search at a different time, you'll probably get um, some different results. And so here's another one that has a code uh, with just a text value, urine volume delta. Let's see if we look a little bit later in the list. Okay, so here's something different. Uh, here's an observation where the code doesn't have any text value at all, um, but instead it has this coding array, and we can see here is a, a loink code. So this says the system is loink.org, and the code is 29463-7. Uh, and if I'm a developer looking at this, it's not super clear to me what's going on. I mean, I really don't know what link code 29463-7 uh, would be, but I can at least kind of learn about this if I paste in various parts here and say, all right, this, this is what I've got. I've got this link code. Let me do a web search. Um, and okay, sure enough, I, I get to a page on link.org, which tells me more about what this code means. Um, so at least I was able to sort of discover that this is a code for body weight. And if we look back at the fire resource um, and scroll through it, we'll see, well, the value was 82 kilograms. Um, so it makes sense that this is a, a body weight that's sort of um, in, the, in the range of adult human weights. And of course, the units indicate that it's a weight. Um, so this sort of seems to check out. Uh, but we see a couple different examples here. We saw one example of a code with just some text. We saw an example here with a link code, which is this numeric value and no text at all. Uh, let's see if we can find uh, anything else interesting. This one looks a lot like the last one with just a link code and no text at all. And here we've got just some text. All right, so what is happening under the hood? Well, the source of truth for the data models that we're looking at here is the fire specification page defining observations. Um, what's, what's in an observation is a whole bunch of content that's laid out here in this table, and we can see that every observation has exactly one code, no less than one and no more than one. And the data type of that code is what Fire calls a codable concept. Um, so this is really what we'll, we'll start off with today, is understanding this data type. And so if I open this page in the background, I'll be on the data types page of the Fire spec, learning about the codable concept which is a complex data type, which means uh, it's got different elements inside of it. And indeed, very similar to what we saw in the happy server examples we looked at, there can be a text element and there can be a coding element. Now, both of these are optional. So we saw an example with just text and no coding. We saw an example with just a coding and no text. Um, but of course, they can also be used together. Uh, and it's actually worth digging into this coding element uh, a little bit as well because it's got uh, some interesting structure to it. First of all, it's optional, but it's an array. So you can have zero or more codings, and then each coding 
has a bunch of metadata, but the most common element, elements of coding um, are these, uh, these two, a, a code, a display, and a system. So what, is, what does all this mean? Well, we said that a fire codable concept can have zero or more codings. So an interesting term here, codable. What this means is something that can be coded but isn't necessarily. So it's always okay to put some text if you don't have a, a structured coded definition um, for what you're observing. Uh, but you may also have translations. You may have multiple different coding systems that all define a concept like body weight. So you might have a code from Link indicating this is a body weight, but there are other structured vocabularies like SNOMED CT. You might have a SNOMED code that indicates this is a body weight. You might have a UMLS, Unified Medical Language System, code indicating this is a body weight. Uh, and in general, you could slap all three of those codes into a single codable concept to say, here's a few different translations that I know for the thing that has been observed. And that way, if you've got a client who really understands LOINC very well, it can look for a value in here where the system is LOINC. But if you've got a client that understands uh, SNOMED and doesn't really understand LOINC, it could look through and try to find a coding with a system that matches uh, SNOMED, and, and so on. So each coding uh, is supposed to identify the system from which it came, uh, as well as the code, which is some kind of a string that's defined by that system. So when we look at LOINC codes, for example, these will be codes that consist of numbers and uh, a hyphen in there somewhere. And that's kind of a, the standard format that LOINC defines for its codes. But different coding systems might have alphanumeric codes, um, might have um, various kinds of descriptions that fit in here. And then each individual coding can also have a display. And you might wonder, you know, why these codings have a display if there's also a text value that can sit next to all the codings. Uh, and the short answer there is that the text value sits outside the codings because it's not necessarily associated with any specific code system. Uh, and this provides us a way to indicate if we've got a LOINC code, we can provide the LOINC preferred term here in this display name. So the LOINC preferred term, uh, well, in LOINC there's a common name, which is body weight. So you might decide to populate that inside of the coding for LOINC. But you might decide to populate the top level text value um, using a, a more human friendly or more generic description uh, that comes from your system of choice. So that's the basic structure of a fire codable concept. You can optionally have a text and you can optionally have an array of codings and together those things are meant to describe a single concept. Now what does that mean a single concept? Well if we look at the fire observation resource again um, well, let's look at a couple of places where the codable concept data type is used. So you can see it's used here for the category element, and it's used here for what's called the code element. So category gives us a way of classifying an observation, and the code element tells us what it was that was observed, what type of observation has been made. And if we look closely, you'll see there's actually a difference in the cardinality. Category is optional, but it can be an array. So you can have multiple category values associated with a single observation. Code, on the other hand, is required, and it's a single value, so you can't have more than one. So there's an interesting kind of array of arrays effect going on here that's, um, that's actually worth calling out explicitly. So let's see if we can just create kind of a, a blank text file here to look at an example of this. So let's say we've got an observation resource. And it's going to have um, maybe some categories. So we represent this as an array. And it's going to have definitely a code, which we represent as a single um, JSON object. Now, inside of here will be the data type for a codable concept. And inside of here, potentially multiple elements, each of a codable concept. So star, star, star here. Uh, represents sort of where, where the codable concept data type will show up. Uh, and of course, if we dig into it, actually the star 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 itself has some more structure. It has system, like we talked about. It has a code, as we talked about, and it has a display. Well, that's not quite right. The codable concept itself has text, 
and it has a coding array. And these properties actually belong to the coding. So this is quite complex um, at first glance. And you might wonder why we go through all this trouble. There's an array of values here, there's codes inside of something called code. Uh, and then over here in our category, we've got um, you know something, something similar. We might see something like that. So this is kind of the skeleton uh, of what a fire observation with two categories and one code might look like. Um, so you can have an array of these categories Ooh, this is, I'm glad I'm doing this step by step because I actually made another mistake. Each of these categories is not just a coding, it's a whole codable concept. And so it can have text and an array of codings. What on earth is going on here? We've got an array of categories, each one is a codable concept, and in turn can have an array of codings. And you might think, why all the arrays? If I can already have a list of things, why don't I just include them all at the top level? Why do I need these nested sublists inside of a list? Here's what's going on. Each codable concept is meant to represent one concept. So for example, if I want to say that uh, my observation is uh, in the category of vital signs, I can use one element of this category array to say that. So maybe I'm going to say something like vital signs. And this represents the category vital signs. I might know three different ways to code up that concept of vital signs. And if I do, I can put all three of them here. One, two, three, and maybe one is uh, loink, and one is snowmed, and these would be proper URLs, so ignore uh, my sort of rough shorthand here. Um, but I can have multiple different codings here in this array, but they all would mean vital signs. They might all be worded differently, uh, so this might you know, have different capitalization, uh, and this one here uh, might say uh, values that represent vital signs. They, they all might have different display text because they come from different standard vocabularies that word things or structure things a little differently, but I put them in this array because they all represent the same concept, which is vital signs. Okay. Now, what if I had a multi-axial categorization? So I want to say, yes, this is an observation um, whose category is vital signs, but maybe I also have an observation um, category that tells me something else about, um, about what this is. Maybe this is um, patient-generated data. And there are, there are other ways, probably better ways, um, to indicate the fact that we've got patient-generated data in FHIR. So ob observation, um, what's it called? Observation.reporter? No. Let's, let's just look at sort of what the proper way to say this was, performer. Uh, so this might be sort of the best way to say that an observation was done by a patient, um, to have a performer actually pointing to the patient who did it, but be that as it may, we might, might, we might also want to assign a category to certain vital signs that would indicate something like this was patient-generated data. Uh, and here, you know, maybe there's, there's also a SNOMED code uh, that indicates something like patient-generated data. But this is really important. It would not make sense to take this coding and stick it up here in this Array. And this is a mistake. Because what we've done here is to take the codings array of one codable concept and represent two different concepts inside of it. A concept for vital signs. Uh, here's, here's a coding on the vital signs concept, but here's a coding on the patient generated data concept. So that's a mistake. And I'm going to undo that mistake so that you can see structurally uh, why this array of arrays is so important. Each one of these categories represents a single concept. And then inside that concept, we can have array, an array of different codings uh, that draw on different vocabularies to express that same concept. And these are effectively translations. The code, on the other hand, 
This is just a single object. It's not an array. Uh, and the reason is that if you want to describe what has been observed, there should only be one concept explaining what was observed. There may be different vocabularies in which you can express it, uh, but if I've observed body weight, that really is the only thing that I've observed. Um, so there's no array brackets here uh, around this element. It's a singleton, and that's what shows up in the fire spec um, as one-to-one, -one, just a single codable concept uh, for this observation uh, code, indicating the type of observation that was made. I will say it is a little bit confusing to call this thing code, and we went back and forth in the early days. Um, you might think about calling this uh, observation dot what was observed. You might think about calling this observation dot name. Um, but we've settled in the fire spec on calling this observation dot code. As I said, it can be a little confusing as you first get used to it, uh, but that's the structure, and that's, that's the way you should think about it when you're looking at this inside of an instance. So that's a quick introduction um, to one of the fundamentals of vocabulary in Fire, which is the codable concept data type. Uh, and in subsequent lessons, we'll come back and understand sort of how and where codable concepts are used compared with other kinds of coded data in the Fire spec. So that's all for today. Thanks for your attention. And uh, please don't hesitate to reach out if you've got any questions.